Shepherd, servants of the Most High God, some of the things that the Lord has been showing us, you there at home, and we want you to know we appreciate you and we love you. Surely words cannot express how greatly I miss not seeing your face, but my spirit is there with you. We are praying with you and you are with me. So right now as we are going into our worship and talk together, reasoning together today, one of those days that we will be reasoning together on two main points. One is in Romans 8, verse 1. There is no, therefore, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And uh, the last verse, no separation. So if there's no condemnation and there's no separation, get ready today. 
that the Holy Spirit is ready to challenge you where you are. But right now we're going to be the, having the blessing of having our missionary Leon. There, Leon is going to come and lead us into prayer. God bless her. Good morning. I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Turn your hearts, turn your thoughts, turn your mind to the God who can do everything and anything. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you today, putting before you, Father, every situation, every circumstance, Father, putting together, putting before you, Father God, your people, those who know you, Lord God, and even those who do not know you, Father. But at this time, Lord God, that your holy presence will be with them, Father. We are asking you, Lord God, that you will give them your peace, your peace that passeth all understanding. Father God, you said, Lord God, that no matter what we are going through, that you'll never leave us and you'll never forsake us, Father God. So, Father, we are asking you to remember those who are on their own today, those, Father God, who are feeling lonely and anxious, those, Heavenly Father God, who would love to go and see somebody, those who would love to go and meet somebody today. But because of this present situation, Lord God, that is not possible, Lord. But, Father God, we ask you also to remember those who are on the front line, Father, laying down their lives, some of them, mm -hmm. Father God, so that others can be healed, so yes. that others can get well. Father God, we ask you to remember those who are grieving today. Yes. Lord, this is a time when they want their families around them, when they want their friends around them, Lord God. But Lord God, it's not possible. So Lord God, this is why we turn to you. Because yes. Lord God, no matter what our situation is, you are with us, Father God. You are with us, Lord. You know everything. You see everything, Lord God. Yes. You know every situation, Lord God. So Father God, we cry out to you today. You said to call unto me. Mm -hmm. And I will answer, and I will show you great and mighty things yes. that you know not of. So, Lord God, we commit this service, this worship to you today, asking you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit, Lord God, will go amongst your people, that your Holy Spirit will just draw people to you, Father God. And we pray, Lord God Almighty, that through all of this, Lord God, that souls will be saved and added to the kingdom, Father. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honour, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
said earlier on, we love you. Our thoughts are with you, those who are in the front line, whatever that front line may be, those of you who are bereaved, your loved ones, those of you who had no thoughts of what is happening now would have taken place. But as I told you some weeks ago, and I'm telling you now, nothing taken God by surprise. He knows. And uh, most of the saints will tell you the same thing, that somewhere along the line in their spirit, they have revelation that something is about to happen. So right now, this day, you will pray with me and uh, share with me the thoughts of knowing that you know the Lord. My job is to try and uh, help you to understand that you are not alone where you are, that someone is there with you, and that he loves you. Now, first thing you will say to me is, Pastor, is God in this situation? And where is his love now? This is really where you will prove the love of God for yourself, just where you are. Because over the years, the preachers been ministering to us what must shortly be. If you have your Bible with you, you could just mark down Matthew 24. Jesus Christ gave about seven major points what must be at the end time. He didn't know exactly the time because he told his disciples that he didn't know. This is a secret for the Father. But he gave us clues. And partners, friends, believe me, I believe with all my heart, being in the church for over 60 years, that everything that should be shaken is shaken. Now, if you're joining with me today, as I try my utmost to reason with you from my spirit before our pastor come to give you a word from the Lord. In Romans 8, I referred to earlier on, it is no, chapter 8 is known as one of the great chapters in the Bible. I cannot say it's the greatest because you may have something else. But from the revelation that you will find in those words, you will see something really challenging. And the Holy Spirit is challenging me uh, from words there. Number one, verse one, it says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walks not after the flesh, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So therefore, we are already on a journey, a spirit journey, spirit walk. So pray with me that God will give you the revelation of this chapter. I'm still new on it, although I have read it many times. Now, here it says, if I am in Christ Jesus, I am not under condemnation. So please don't allow the spirit of condemnation to hold you back today and to wipe that lovely smile off your face because our job is to help you and to strengthen your hope in Christ. Now the hymn is said, on Christ, the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. Now the hymn is said, you know, 
because of the hope that he has in Christ, says that I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but I wholly lean on Jesus' name. Truly today, as you're leaning on, on, on that name, back to the scripture in Romans 8, you will find reading from about verse 26, Paul said to the brethren there, right? We don't know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit itself make an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the heart knows the mind of the Spirit, what it is, because he maketh intercession for the saints. And watch this in verse 28. And you have heard it many times. And we know, now watch this, it says, because you are making intercession for the saints, you are praying for somebody. You don't allow this shut down to shut you down. I believe you will come out of this a stronger Christian. Having more understanding of God and his word, use your time wisely and let God speak to you. It says, he that searcheth the heart knows the mind of the spirit what it is because he maketh intercession for the saints. That's why people like myself today are pastors like myself are able to stand and uh, encourage you because you are interceding for us as we pray together. And thank you for your prayers. I feel it right now. Thanks be to God. Now, then it says here in verse 28, all things, and we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God. Now, you will understand it. I told you two weeks ago that in Mark 12, Jesus said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy might, and with all thy strength. And then you love your neighbor as you love yourself. I'm not asking you to put your Bible down. I'm asking you to still hold your Bible. Because it's written there. In there today, if you have these two commandments in your spirit, there is no pandemic, no devil strong enough to hold you down because God's love is in your heart. So here it says, all things work it together for the good of those who love God. Now, I know you love him. And if you didn't love him as you ought, just love him. It's not a matter that you can just put it off because you're going through now. This is the time just to remember to love God. And he will work it out for you. Our scientists are not able to, and it's a fact that some are not sure what advice to give. But you have the Bible, beloved. But it says here, if everything is working together for the good of those who love God, and let me just read to you what it's saying here. It says, to those who are called according to the purpose of God. Amen. Amen. You have the call of God on your life. We say, for whom he did foreknow, then he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that they may be the firstborn among many brethren. Amen. And it says here, for whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And those whom he called, beloved, them he also justified. The Bible said, being justified by faith, you have peace with God. Then he also justified. 
and those who be justified, then be also glorified. Hear me then, beloved, he said, what can we say about these things? If God be for us, hallelujah. Oh, you ought to just put a smile on your face today. If God be for us, beloved, then who can be against us? Hear me, beloved, he who spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who can lay anything before to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ who died. Yea, rather, he is risen again from the dead. Oh, praise God Almighty. I have the assurance he is risen again from the dead. Amen. Who is at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. And he gave us now 17 things why we cannot be separated from the love of God. And it says, who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall this persecution, persecution, distress, amen, our tribulation, persecution, persecution, tribulation, distress, persecution, tribulation, distress, amen, nakedness, amen, famine, or the sword, as it is written, for thy sake, he said, we are killed all the day long. It's right there in your Bible. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Amen. Amen. Tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, perils, or the sword. Right? As it is written, for thy sake, O God, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep. Come on, saints. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. To him who loved us. Hallelujah. We are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us and gave himself for us. For I, and here was the Apostle Paul speaking now, said, I am persuaded. And according to the Greek, the word persuaded there, Petro, P-I-T-H-O, and it says here, I am confident and I have the confidence. I am assured, hallelujah, praise God. I am assured and I have the assurance. Praise God, praise God. I am convinced and I live with the conviction. Ten more things that neither death, glory, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, things present, hallelujah, things present, pandemic right now, you have never seen such a time like this. Amen. Things present or things to come. Height or depth or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hear me friends, there's no separation. I heard that about 10,000 people today as I speak to you in India and they rent a holiday and they want to come home back to England and there's no flights for them and this is a world crisis the aeroplanes are grounded our church buildings are empty 
You never saw or read of anything of this nature before. And you are saying, what next? Well, as the preacher is coming to reason with you for a little, my advice to you, what next? If you are saved, hold on to this assurance. There is no separation. There is no devil big enough to separate you from the love of God. If you are not saved right where you are, Jesus loved you so much because the Bible said he came into the world to save sinners. And right where you are today, he can save you. You will hear more later on. But please make the best of the time. Don't sit back and get depressed and distressed. Grow strong in the grace of God. We love you and we are praying for you. Bless your partners in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Amen. Give him a shout of praise. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Jesus. Hallelujah.
whether it's the good things, whether it's the bad things, we must give God praise. And we thank God this afternoon that God is here. I just, just want to leave a short, very short reflection uh, from St. Matthew chapter 24, from verse 37 to 39, and also from Genesis chapter 8, verse 6. And as we are saying today, I was reminded, asked a question this week, what in the world is going on? And it was a question that is plaguing so many people, saved and unsaved. This question is not new, it's not an old question. As we read in St. Matthew chapter 24, it was the same question that Jesus' disciples asked him. In Matthew 24 and 37, Jesus, when they came to him, said, what shall be the signs? And he, as Obisir said, he outlined all the signs. But there's one sign in particular I would like to leave in your hearing this afternoon. It said, Matthew chapter 24, verse 37. And it said, but as the... We said, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And they said that they were eating, they were drinking, they were having merriments, they were not concerned what for God or what He was doing. And so I was going to leave this other verse with you very quickly. It said, it's Genesis chapter 8 and verse 6. And it came to pass at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. May God add his blessing to his words this afternoon. I would like to speak on the phrase, a phrase that we, we, we know so well, and it came to pass. And if we understand that phrase, and it came to pass, it means that something happened, and it is now passed. And it came to pass, it didn't mean it had come to stay. Things pass and things go. But the, when we look at the word, and it came to pass, and when we read it, it's a phrase that is used from Genesis to, to Revelation. And it's, it's used over 400 times. And it came to pass. Even in the, the nativity, as we read in Christmas, in Luke chapter 2 and verse 1, we see, and it came to pass. And in, in Exodus, we see, and it came to pass. So, when we see that, when he sees the word, and it came to pass, meaning that your suffering, that your, your oppression, your heartache, your circumstances doesn't last. It will soon go. And it came to pass. So as Christians, we can say, and it came to pass, it did not stay. We can say from the phrase of, 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 of the Bible reminds us, that this situation and our circumstances that we face are not permanent. They are only temporary. The situation that we, that we face today, Peter said, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials. So John, to Jesus remind us in St. John chapter 16 and verse 33. Jesus said, these things have I spoken unto you, that you might have peace. In this world you shall have tribulation. Be of good cheer. For I have overcome the world. Jesus said, you can have peace, you can have shalom, you can have joy, you can have contentment, you can have happiness. Because I, Jesus, have overcome every situation that you're facing. Every situation, every setback, every disease, every hurt, every dilemma that you're facing. Jesus said, I have overcome them. So you can have peace this afternoon. You can have joy this afternoon that your situation is only temporary. That your situation that you're facing is not going to last always. I thank God there was a song that trouble don't last always. And I thank God this afternoon that it has come to pass. So this your present day situation is going to end. And so when we, the world is in, is in chaos, economic chaos, political chaos, Hell Christ, Christ is on every hand. But this is nothing new. If you were to remind ourselves of, of going back uh, in the 1400s, it was a plague and it came to pass. And there were the great plague of London in uh, 1665 to 66, and that came to pass. 
and the, the Spanish flu in 1918, it came to pass. It did not stay. And so it killed millions of people. So in our time, and the days that we're living, We've had AIDS, and that's come to pass. We've had swine flu, we've had Ebola, we've had Zika, we've had all these things. Now we've got uh, whatever they call it, Coronas, and it will come to pass, it will not stay. Because we know that Jesus, that Jesus said, I have gone to prepare a place where let not your heart be troubled. So now when we go back to the text, now we go back to the text in, in, uh, in, in the Genesis chapter, uh, eight, and it says when we go back to Genesis chapter eight and verse six, it says, and it came to pass at the end of forty days that Noah opened the window, and it came to pass after a period of one hundred and twenty years, a period of three forties, that Noah warned the people that judgment was coming. Noah preached and made the provision of the ark. The ark was not only for Noah and his family for the animals. The ark was for those who wanted to have their life right with God. And for 120 years, Noah preached. Just as how Peter described Noah as a righteous preacher. Peter said in 1 Peter, in 2 Peter chapter 3, he said in the last days there shall be scoffers and mockers. And where is it? In, what is going on? Where is Jesus coming back? But we know that Jesus is Christ is coming back again. So after 40 days, that when Noah opened up the window, he first sent a raven. The raven did not come back. He sent out a dove. The dove came back twice. Three times it came back. And the last time it came back, we came with an olive branch saying that something was growing. New life was growing out of that stormy situation, out of that situation that was bleak and desolate, the, rave, the, the dove came back and said, there is new life, there is new hope. Today, once you open up your window and say, God, there is new hope, there is hope for the world, and the hope is found in Jesus Christ. The, world, the hope that we need is not found in the bottle. The hope that you not need is not found in friends. The hope, my friends, is found in Jesus. The flood is coming. And so the, it came and passed. But we see something significant in the number 40. In the, in the Bible, the number 40 stands for testing, trials, and it also a, a, a time of probation. The flood lasted for 40 days. And it came to pass, it did not stay. And so the children of Israel wandered in the desert for 40 years. We found that Moses went up to the mountain and stayed to receive the law for 40 days. Goliath, he taught to Israel for 40 days. For 40 days, Goliath was wandering up and down on that hill. He said, find me a man. But I find God after 40 days. God didn't have a man. God had a boy called David. God had a, had a young boy with a sling and with the, with, with the faith. He said, I, with his testimony, he said, I, have, I can fight this Goliath. Because this Goliath is going to come and it's going to come to pass. He said, I fought a, a bear, I fought a lion, and I've defeated them so I can fight this uncircumcised giant. I don't know what your Goliath is today. Standing and torturing you for 40 days. By the end of the 40 days, that Goliath had to come down. Jesus, uh, Jonah, he prophesied and preached. He said, after 40 days, Nineveh shall be... And the people turned their hearts back to God. Jesus fasted and was tempted in the wilderness for 40 days. Jesus, uh, for his resurrection, 40 days between the resurrection and the ascension, he walked on this earth. He met the disciples. So in our text, we can see that God is at work. The world does, is not out of control because God is still in control. We see at the end of the 40, there's something about 40. There's something about 40. The 40 represents that the flood was not going to be permanent. It had to go. It had to go. But 40 also re represents transition, change, renewal, a new beginning. 
God wants to do something special in your life. Psalm 34 verse 19 said, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver them out of them all. Many are the afflictions. Yes, many people are going to die. Many afflictions are going to come our way, but the Lord shall deliver us them out of them all. No matter what you're going through, it will soon come to an end. Because God said so. Jesus, just as our Goliath, was wandering about. But I thank God, as we looked at that, the number 40 stands for renewal, stands for new hope, stands for a new, a new war, just as our Noah opened up the window. After 40 days, he saw that God was doing something, that the flood was subsiding. God it was going to do something special. But I like this. We say that, that in the Bible, it's over 400 times, it said, and it, come to, and it shall come to pass. But I'm going to use the word, and it shall come to pass. Meaning in the, the future, my God, my sinner friend today, my friend, if you don't know Jesus, Acts 2.21 says this, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be saved. That is a future tense and it shall come to pass. Whatever is your situation, it, as you said, it shall come to pass. Once you call on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. What hope that we have today. What a blessed blessing. You don't have to die in your sin. You don't have to be lonely. You don't have to be, uh, have no one to talk to. Jesus said, the Bible said, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. We've got to call upon the name of the Lord. In your trial, call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. But uh, my friends, there is a greater hope. For the believers here this afternoon, as I'm closing, there is a greater hope. And this hope, hallelujah, where it says in Romans 10 verse 13, what a hope and consolation. It said, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. What a hope, what a joy. Once we call upon the Lord, hallelujah, we shall be saved. Salvation in its totality means that you can be saved not only from sin, but saved to eternal life. Saved in this present. Saved to do what God wants you to do. But the, for the Christians here today, I like what Joel says in Joel 2 verse 28 and 20. And it shall come to pass. Hallelujah. That in the last days I am going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And then Peter, as he was uh, preaching it on the day of Pentecost. He said, and it shall come to pass. He did not say, and it came to pass. That is gone. He said, and it shall come to pass in the last days that I am going to pour up my spirit upon all flesh. Hallelujah. I believe that we're in the days of it shall come to pass. We have gone past the days where, as, as it said, as it has come to pass. Because as it says, as it's come to pass, mean it doesn't stay. But I'm talking about a future tense. We said, in the last days, it said, it shall come to pass, said God, that I am going to pour out my spirit. I pray this afternoon, whatever situation you might be facing, you might be facing uh, a Goliath situation. You might be facing a children of Israel situation where you're wandering in the desert for 40 years. You might be facing a situation where there's no hope. This afternoon, we are telling you from the miracle church of God in Christ in Bedford today, we are telling you today, and it shall come to pass. It shall not stay because God says a word. He said, in the last day, whosoever shall call upon my name shall be saved. My friend today, call upon God. Call upon him while he's there. Call upon Jesus. Call upon him. And he's well the one that's going to help you. God bless you. If you want to pray this afternoon, uh, there's a value to ask me. That. I'm just going to call you to pray this afternoon. I'm, I'm going to have my, my status. But call you to pray today. Because the, when we pray, we've got to pray. We've got to pray. We've got to pray. God bless you this afternoon. And it came to pass. It did not say it shall stay. It has gone, but God is in that coming to pass. God said, I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. God bless you. God bless you this afternoon. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes.
Bless the Lord. Praise God. We have listened to the word this morning. And so we're going to pray. We want to just be before God. Open our hearts. Open our mind, our spirit today to receive what God has sent to us from the preacher, Pastor Skipton. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, as we bow before you, we thank you today because you have given us and you have sent us your word. Amen. Father God, I pray today that your word, Lord, that is so powerful, your word that is so quick, your word that is so oft, oh God, so powerful, your word that is so alive, today, Father, will touch the hearts of your people. Lord Jesus, I pray today that if there's someone standing right now or sitting wherever they may be, oh God, I pray that your Holy Spirit will examine their heart. Oh God, and that they will see the need to open their hearts and to receive you as their personal Savior. God, you died on the cross. You sent Jesus Christ, your son, to die on the cross to take away our sin. And so, Father God, I pray today for that, that person who does not know you as their Lord and Savior. That right now, Lord, they will open their heart to receive you. I pray today, Father God, that as, as your people listen to the message that has gone forth, God, that they will accept your word and that they will know that you care about them. That you, you love them with an everlasting love. And whatever situation they may find themselves in right now, my God, you are the God who cares. You're the God who understands. You're the God who is right there in their midst. So, Holy Father, I thank you. Continue to bless your people. Whatever they need, our Lord, you are able to provide. Lord, you said the cattle upon a thousand hills are yours. And so, Heavenly Father, today you are a God that is able. And we thank you, Father in heaven, for supplying every need in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My tomorrow must be greater than today.
today, you are giving up on hope, but the Lord raised us up to let you know that there is hope. Don't give up on hope. I take the challenge standing out here, representing thousands of people across the world in different countries, and uh, some of you today, whatever you're on, whatever station you're on, what's up? Facebook, Instagram, um, online. We here in America, Church of God in Christ, Bedford, England, salute you. Thank you for your patience, your understanding, and your love, especially to our pastors and officers in the church. The responsibility I know is great, but like God spoke to Joshua and Joshua to the officers and the officers to the people. So leaders, officers, one and all, I salute you. Thank you for your patience, your understanding in dealing with the flock of God, Amen. especially time like this. May I just ask you today to remember that you are important to God. Amen. God has a plan in you. 
Yes. I told you that the God we serve is a God of plan. Yes. He's a God of purpose. He's a God of design. He's a God of objectivity. Yes. He knows your tomorrow. And we heard it in this song that your tomorrow will be greater than your today. How could one tell Joseph when he was sold by his own brethren, brothers into Egypt that God has a plan? I told you before that in Romans 8, 28, that all things are working together for your good. It's working out. Well, at my age, I could tell you, and being a minister of the Lord for nearly 60 years, I have seen some disappointment. I've seen some strange things. And I can only conclude by saying this to you today, that if you love God, it's working out for your good. Amen. Joseph was sold, stripped of his robe of many colors by his own brothers. But it's one thing they couldn't take from Joseph, beloved, was God's favor. And if God's favor is on your life today, this is the time, child of God, to shine. Let the world know that you are who you say you are. This is no time to hide. This is time to stand up and be counted. Old song said, stand up, stand up for Jesus. Ye soldiers of the cross, lift high his royal banner. He must not suffer loss from victory. Hallelujah. On to victory. His army shall he lead till every foe is vanquished. And Christ, my friends, is Lord indeed. I said on Christ is Lord indeed. Christ is Lord indeed. Christ is Lord indeed. Christ Jesus is Lord indeed. I never thought so. But Sunday morning came. And just like Sunday morning came for Jesus when the stone was rolled away, my friends, your Sunday morning is coming. And whatever is holding you back today, your tomorrow is coming. Hallelujah. And it's going to be better, much, much better than today. I want to ask you today, right where you are now, just now, just now where you are, to think with me, man is not just body. Man is spirit and soul but he lives in a body hallelujah. hallelujah coronavirus might touch the body but hear me friends it cannot touch the spirit Amen. and the soul i want you to understand that there's a purpose in all of this for you and you are going to shine for if God is for you, nothing can be against you. Hallelujah. 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 If God is on your side, then you can smile. Because I know that I know that I know that your tomorrow is going to be better than today. Amen. God said it. And I believe it, friends. How we would love to be right where you are now in that living room or some of you here you about stay your time in the home and you long to come out yes so what if you have to wait another week another two weeks i am telling you that your tomorrow is going to be better Amen. than today hallelujah praise god somebody Praise God, somebody. Praise him, somebody. Praise him in this situation. 
your tomorrow is going to be better than today. For some of you, you may be saying, but pastor, I don't have a job to go back to. But I'm telling you this, this is time as you are at home now, or where you are. Hear me, write that book. Amen. Get online. Do that course you long to do. Call up somebody. Be that minister you want to be. Get hold of your Bible. And every three months you're going to say, I'm going to read it through. And though the enemy thought he's crushing your head. But let me tell you this. The Bible said the serpent can only crush the woman. Heal. Or the heal of the woman. But the woman is going to crush the serpent's head. You're going to come out rather than being a servant. Amen. You're going to come out a director. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You're going to come out rather than working for somebody. You're going to come out when somebody working for you. Amen. And they're going to say, how did it happen? Through the pandemic. Because God, my friend, is in the turning around business. Amen. He's turning the curse into a blessing. Amen. He's turning your sickness into healing. Are you hearing me today? That God is turning your sorrow into joy. He's turning your poverty into wealth. Yes. He's turning, he's turning your loneliness into companionship. Hallelujah. God is blessing you right where you are. Don't, don't give up on yourself. Yes. Your best is yet to come. Hallelujah. It's going to work. It's going to work for your good only put God first now I want to just conclude enjoying a reference of two things because I said it to you today you need to know the direction yes you need to know that the children of Israel came out of Egypt and they crossed the Red Sea by faith on the word of God. Yes. They, not one of them was drowned. But the Egyptians are said to do the same thing. Unfortunately, they were drowned. Yes. You see, there's a difference, my friends, between presumption and faith. If you want God to deliver you, fall on God's side. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But if you want to be drowned, then stay on the Egyptian side. If you step over today and accept Jesus, I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about a relationship with someone who is alive. I told you before, amen, that Confucius told his followers that he could see the way, that he knows the way. Hare Krishna said to his followers he could show them the way. Dr. Moon said to his followers that he's, he can see the way. The other prophet said to his followers he's seeking the way. But my friends, Jesus Christ said, I am the way. Hallelujah. If you today, and I told you last week and I'm saying it again, were lost somewhere and you saw two men, only one is dead and one is alive, who would you ask the way? I tell you, I would ask the living one. Hallelujah. Because he is alive. Hallelujah. My friend, Jesus Christ Hallelujah. is alive. Every other party who died, there remains are yes. still in the tomb. Hallelujah. The only tomb that is empty, my friends, is the tomb of Jesus Christ, Hallelujah. the son of the living God. Come to that empty tomb today. He is the only savior. He is the only door. He is the only way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, if you come to him, he said, I am the way. Then you cannot be lost. He said, I am the truth. Then you cannot be deceived. And he said, I am the light. That is all the light. That is you cannot die eternally. God loves you today, my friends. Right where you are now, just bow your head and ask him into your life. Simple thoughts, Romans 10, 
Amen. Said with the heart, man believeth yes. unto righteousness. It's not about your works. No. You don't have to bring an offering about this. It's about coming to Christ. You, you come to him as you are. Him said, just as I am. Without one plea. But that thy blood was shed for me. And that thou bid me come to thee. O Lamb of God, I come. Amen. 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 One experience the joy of coming to Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dr. Skiba, he lost everything. And while he was going home to mourn the loss of his wife and family, his house was raised by fire to the ground. And all he had left in life, my friends, was what he was wearing. And glory to God, he walked by the river to mourn his lost. But by the river, God gave him a song. The song was, when peace like a river yes. attended my ways. Man. When sorrow like sea pillars roll, whatever my lot that was taught me to know. It is well with my soul. My friends, is it well with your soul today? If it's not, you can make it well. Last week I told you that faith that is tested is faith that can be trusted. This week I reminded you on the thought there is no condemnation and there is no separation. Amen. Now I want you to know by the grace of God Next week, amen, don't miss us. We will be talking to you if we can on the 23 things why God gave up on Israel. Don't let God give up on you right now where you are. Amen. We want to pray with you in Jesus' mighty name. What a great day to be saved. What a great day to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Oh, thank God Almighty. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My God, the rich man, the ruler, came to you and he told you that he knows that you have to come from God to do what you are doing. And you replied to him, he must be born again. He must be born again. He must be born again. He couldn't understand it. And so it is those under the hearing of my voice, some of them don't understand what I'm saying. But God, they must be born again. They must be born again. They must be born again. So I pray, Holy Father, that you'll speak to their spirit right now. Some of them just love you. Don't understand the church. They don't understand what's happening. But right now I see somebody. Oh God, with the Bible in their hand. Oh, right now I see that lady with her head bowed, feeling she was forgotten and nobody cares. Yes, my daughter, right where you are, Jesus loves you. He loves you enough that if you were the only person on planet Earth, he would have died for you. Just right now, ask him to save you. Hallelujah. Don't let the enemy condemn Hallelujah. you by saying you should Hallelujah. have come before. And it's true, this pandemic, why you're coming, he's a liar. Well, whatever God has to use to get us, well, just thank him that he got you while you're still alive. Yes. Rather than find yourself in the pit of hell, that horrible pit. The Bible said, we are the worm, diet not. Hallelujah. And the fire is never quenched. Oh, you must remember... If you don't let go for Jesus now, one day you're going to hear his voice again. Today he's knocking on the door of your heart. Just let him in before it is too late. Thank you today, Father, for bringing salvation into those homes, into those lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Now if you have prayed that prayer like some people calling up, and they want to get baptized. Mm -hmm. Well, strange enough. Yes. People want to get baptized yes. now and they are thinking, yes. who's going to go in the pool with me? <laughs> well, there are people who volunteer. Whatever happened, they'll go. But believe me, 
What if it gets worse before it gets better? Today is the best day to come. And if you have made your commitment to Jesus Christ, write to us. We are from the Miracle Church of God in Christ. Amen. Bedford, Great Britain. Hallelujah. And we want you to know that we're here to help you. So if you have any need, whatever the need, write to us. Amen. Call us. We, I gave you the number before and I'm giving you the numbers again. It is 01234. Amen. 215081. The mobile number is um, 07 818 432 529. Don't die in silence. Amen. Don't die in loneliness. Amen. Die in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because you will never be forgotten. Remember, He loves you. You are somebody. You are very important to God. Oh, today is your day. Hallelujah. So come on now Hallelujah. and rejoice with us. Make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, not just a Savior. Make Him the Lord. Lord is someone you obey. God bless you. We love you, Bedford. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And amen. Now we are going to give the blessing today, and it's coming to us from the book of Jude. Now um, it's going to be important that I do it to you, if I can, in the amplified version. So hear it, and listen to it, and try and put it into being. Amen. Said now unto him Amen. who is able to keep you without stumbling yes hallelujah without slipping or falling and to present you on blemish yes hallelujah on blemish blameless and without faults for the presence of his glory with triumphant joy and exaltation with unspeakable Yes. Hallelujah. Ecstatic delight. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Unspeakable ecstatic delight. To the one only God. Hallelujah. Our Savior. To Jesus Christ our Lord. Be glory. Hallelujah. Amen. And splendor. Majesty. Might. Dominion. Power. And authority before all time and now and forever, even unto all the ages, Bedford, and the rest of the world of eternity, is able to keep. Hallelujah. He won't let you down. He will meet every need in your life. Write to us, we love you, and God bless you. See you again the same time next Sunday. By the grace of God. If we don't meet here, remember, we'll meet in glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you all and God bless you. Amen. Amen. Lift up your voice. Hallelujah.
Your best is yet to come, Bedford. God bless you. Expect, expect a miracle. God will show up in your behalf. Let us hear from you. God bless you. Next week, the same time here. Amen. And what a glory if we're not here. And we can all meet up in glory. But do your best. God be with you. Shine, beloved. God is on your side. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Love you all.